mean, cut off, open and close. That's cool, but the modulation gives it the wobble. Welcome to the studio guys, I'm finally done, like the last three days, I've been like tweaking stuff, optimizing stuff, I bought a ton of equipment, sold a ton of stuff, now it's really narrowed down to the most essential and everything is connected in a way that I can just use it instantly. Because there are a lot of pros and cons when it comes to like real analog synthesizers. A con of them is that they're not working like a plugin, you can't recall, you can't like instantly change, save and switch around. But with this kind of setup, I think I got as close as possible to make it really efficient so that like the workflow and being creative and being fast and getting ideas fast into the computer doesn't suffer at all. So first up, I got two interfaces, Madison. They're connected via Madi. Right here's the second one. This one right here has the ins and outs for everything you see right here. And the other one at the front for everything that is in the table, also the connection to the speaker. This way, I don't have any cable running in between. It's just like a single MADI cable, which is very thin going underneath of the floor. And it's all set up fairly simple. Input 1 and 2, Iridium 2 and 3, the Super Jupiter 4 and 5, the Moog Voyager 6 and 7 the batter makers, 9 and 10, the delay, 11, 12, the acid box, 13, 14, fusion box. And then we're continuing right here. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26. And for every single one, I have a preset in Logic. So I can go in here, for example, have a MIDI ARP being played. And I know it's the OB6, because the preset says it right there. I can go there, tweak it. And if I don't like the sound, I actually really like the sound, but let's say I wouldn't like the sound. I just click there and then I can choose, for example, the DX7, which is right on top right there. Let's say I want the Super Jupiter, just go in here, Super Jupiter, and it's like all already leveled, and all of them already have the right MIDI channels. So it says right here, input 3, 4, and it says right here, MIDI destination, it's just called USB MIDI interface, it's like one of those small things you put in between. Um, but for example, for, for the um, MOOC right here, it actually says the name of it. <laughs> It's detuned. Um, even for that, very simply, you click on here, just um, press any kind of note. Can correct the tuning. I think the only one that does that frequently is the Super Jupiter. Actually, it's also the oldest one. All of the other ones are very stable when it comes to tuning, and they also auto tune. The Super Jupiter also has an auto tune, but uh, it's sometimes a little off, but yeah, now we got it in there. A really nice, cool, old school kind of Cindy sound. If I like it, I can leave it in there and add additional tracks with some of the other Cindy's. So I could actually have like the Super Jupiter playing the ARP the Voyager, the bass, then maybe one of them right there, the pad. I can just like have it in there, construct a song. The rest is done either done with software. I got plenty of software. I actually deleted half of it because it was too much and I didn't use all of it. And it just makes my computer really stupid and takes away a lot of time of me because I can't decide which one to use. But for example, right here, I think there is like an ARP playing. actually two contact patches layered on top of each other. Like the contact stuff, the more organic sounding stuff is really left to software mostly. And then also Omnisphere is something you can't really get out of hardware. 
But now let's actually say I, I like the OB6 sound we had at the very beginning for the ARP. I can change the octave right here in Logic. Now if I want to send it to one of the paddles right here, the delay or the asset box, I can either put it on a bus, and I have a preset for these buses. Right here, user channel, strip settings, set asset box, fusion box, then delay. Or I can just send the entire signal right there with the utility, IO, stereo, and then I have presets in here, send delay. Then 100% is sent right there. <laughs> love that thing it's really easy just put it right on there it's working and I haven't found a plugin that does something similar in a wild way like this and with the nice distortion that it has but then everything else is like done within the box if I need something simple I just just use it within the computer I also always have like let's say the OB6 I have like one track now with the MIDI in there then I record it and once I record it, I, I mute the MIDI thing, but I still keep it in there so I don't have to replay something if I might not like the sound, have to go back. But usually, whenever I use analog gear and I like something, I, I keep it. Like, bouncing it in there, like recording it, actually makes me use it more. Also, like, the while recording, being able to automate already makes the sounds more interesting over time, so it's less likely that I get bored of them sitting here for hours and hours and producing with them. Well, yeah, that's kind of the basic setup. Let me work on the song a little, share it with you, and maybe there's something else I forgot. It's so much fun, it's working. Uh, I just wish I had more hands to control of it at the same time. I'll record now every single bit after another. Ooh, there's, there's still some feedback in there. And like the, the wildness of it, like the mistakes that happen, that's what makes it interesting. For example, the bass line. I mean, cut off, open and close. That's cool, but the modulation gives it the wobble. And that's the stuff that really can make or break a song. Having a ton of these small kind of, maybe a little too much release on there, but yeah, having these, these things that just like make it less loopy, less boring, things that are just happening, that it sounds a little more like random, like playing a real instrument, like having things in there that some might consider a mistake, but I personally consider like humanizing. There is like a button in Logic where you can humanize MIDI. Basically doing that with everything a little. Not too much that it throws you off, but just a hint. Even like just like bending by like half a semitone, the bass up and down. A lot of songs actually do that. Creates a movement and interest. Just make sure it just doesn't clash. Anyways, that's basically my setup. That's what I found to be good for me, my music, and having fun while making music and like compensating, because I'm really lazy when it comes to automating in, in the box, so having some sense is really nice. I, I used to make music only in the box. It's also 100% fully possible, so don't be disencouraged by like seeing a bunch of stuff. I also don't heavily advise anyone getting some analog gear. It's, again, it's not necessary. It's a matter of taste. Try it out. If it helps you, then yes. If not, then not. That's how simple it is. 
and no one can really tell if a song was made purely analog, purely on the box. It really depends how you use things to make them sound like you want them to sound. You can get a fully analog sounding kind of mix just within the computer if you know how to do it. For me, it's more like a workflow thing. I love to have buttons, turn them, play around, a more playful kind of way and approach to making music. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know if I should get anything else. You might have noticed at the very beginning, there are some channels still available, but I personally think that's enough. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Tomorrow back again here in the studio, continuing working on that song.